I'm Nigel Griffiths and it's my great pleasure to talk about the Power9 S924 server. What you really need to know, 9 facts about your disks and system planar. Removable disk unit called an RDX connected via USB. This is a regular disk in a hard cartridge. You pop it in and you can use it as a disk then you press a button and it will pop out. This is a nice low cost backup device. You need to have it stand alone as the top right picture or down the bottom. It can be in the front of the machine. Fact number 2. We're looking at system planers. We have a base one, a split and then we have two advanced function planers. The planers support the internal hard disk options. Fact number three, for the base planer, we have 12 disks in the front of the machine connected to a single SAS controller. It supports mirror stripes and RAID 5 and the optional RDX. Split planer is much the same as a second simple SAS controller and that allows us to split the 12 disks into two sets of six. So two different operating systems and two different virtual IO servers can have their own set of disks internally. Fact number four is the expanded function planers. The first one has 18 bays. It has the accelerated controllers, which has a protect Protected, battery backed up write caches, more advanced RAID features and easy tier and we can have an external SAS port to which we can connect a remote drawer, more on that later. The fourth one is the same as the 18 bay but it's a 12 bay and we have an optional slot for the RDX to go. In fact number five, the internal disks are 4K formatted, that's four kilobyte blocks. They're two and a half inches in size, that's called SFF or small form factor. A lot of them are coming over from Power 8. If you find the same feature code in the Power 9 machines then you should be able to reuse those discs. I would upgrade the firmware on them just to make sure. Fact number six, on the left hand side we have the regular hard disks. There's a trade-off between the RPM, how fast they are, how big they are and how much they cost. You'll have to make up your own minds there. On the right hand side we have the solid state drives. Of course these wear out with the excessive writing to the device. So you have to decide whether you want 10 or 1 DWP drive writes per day over five years. Again, there's cost implications based on the size and their use. There's also a set of disks which are very similar to this, but slightly smaller in size, but that's because IBM I will use the 512 byte blocks and they come up to a lower number. Fact number seven, if you want even more disks, then we can add a disk drawer full of SAS disks. The EXP12SX has 12 three and a half inch disks. The EXP24SX has 24 two and a half inch disks. We can also connect an exp 24 S. We can't buy them anymore, but you might have those already connected to your older machines and you can bring them over. All these connect via the PCIe SAS adapter or a SAS port if you've got the expanded function planer. Fact number eight is we now have NVMe, which is new for power scale out. Although that stands for non volatile memory, in this case it behaves very much like very fast disks. The NVMe carrier cards has two 400 gigabyte M2 drives in it, so you get a maximum of four. These are very high performance, so they're quite a lot faster than your SSD disks, but there's no concurrent maintenance for uh, replacing them online. They have a write endurance of one drive write per day, primarily intended for the store and boot of your operating systems. Each NVMe device can be assigned to a different operating system or LPAR. Fact number nine, fiber channel SANS to access to a LUN at the back end disk units is still going strong in large computer rooms. This allows for a whole bunch of very nice features. I'm not going to go through this long list as you should know this already. Here's my list of the nine facts we just looked through. Pause the video if you want to read them. So what you need to remember, well, a wide range of disk sizes, a wide range of disk types and technology and three ways of doing your dual VAO server. Well, that's it for this video of what you need to know. Next time we'll be looking at the facts about the system software. As always, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to know more.